Besides insane levels of hotness, what do Henry Cavill and Daniel Craig have in common? It's a buttload of boobs, blood, and butts. Maybe even a metric assload. That's right. It's the new season of True Blood. Keep your arms and legs inside the car at all times, kids. It's time for Slice. Covering all the news from every dark corner of the universe. SliceofSciFi.com And greetings everyone to another Slice of Sci-Fi. I am Michael R. Menengay. I am Noah Richman. I'm Ben Raginton. Sam Smash! <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Keith Lane. Megan, I'm I'm blown away by your alliteration. That's <laughs> what it is. Hey, let's get to some news, guys. Yeah, we got good stuff. Your news team is next. So, director Zack Snyder's long-awaited reboot of Superman finally swoops into theaters this weekend, and mm. we love it! Yeah. Produced by Christopher Nolan, the reboot brings us the grounded, realistic approach to something that is blocking my script um, that set <laughs> Nolan's Batman reboot apart. So, he was, you know, Batman was sort of grittier and more realistic, and they're trying that with Superman. Mm -hmm. um, producer and co-writer Deborah Snyder says that the Man of Steel looks to emphasize character over action. Snyder says she, Zach, and co-writer David Goyer tried to find struggles to make the Man of Steel relatable to movie audiences, something she feels was missing from previous screen incarnations. Snyder says the last couple of cinematic Superman were too Boy Scout and not really able to fully connect uh, with the audience. That that that's a, dangerous. That is yeah. a, I know, I know, I like, I like the so Boy Scout thing that's is what that's really his thing. Thing. That is Superman. Yeah. That's Superman. So you don't want to fiddle with that too much, but I, I get what she means, right? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I mean, he is an alien and he is sort of this perfect ideal and so you want some relatability there. So you do want to see some struggles. Um, so to remedy that, Snyder cast actor Henry Cavill as Superman. He is no stranger to being in the running for iconic roles. I did not know this, but he was in talks to be James Bond before that role went to Daniel Craig. Really? And I, I like Henry Cavill, but I'm, I'm glad I'm glad Daniel Craig got oh, it. Oh, absolutely. Thought he was, um, excellent. Craig was the best. Uh, he's seriously the best Bond <sighs> ever. I'm biased because he's like at the top of my free pass list, but <laughs> I, I agree with you. I think he's, I prefer the grittier, more like the books Truly. Bond. Um, we're veering off Superman, though, and we're all excited about it. So to make himself look more super, Cavill decided not to have the suit or digital effects to... Th yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was derailed. Um, he decided not to have the suit or digital effects do the work for him. Instead, he went on a diet and exercise routine to bulk up and uh, get those abs of steel. So it's it's all Cavill, people. What kind of abs? Uh, of steel. Okay. <laughs> Just want to be sure. Yeah. Cavill says the routine helped him get into character and look good. Mm -hmm. I wonder if his girlfriend helped. You know, he's dating Gina Carano, and she is oh, bad yeah. Dude, ass. Yeah. She's in good shape. She's a butt kicker. Truly. Um, so we think you'll have lots to say about Man of Steel, and we would love to hear about it, um, but we would like for you please to keep your comments spoiler-free to be kind mm -hmm. to your other fans who can't see it immediately. Um, but please do send us your spoiler-free thoughts uh, in via the Slice of Sci-Fi app, or you can be old school about it and email Mike at SliceofSciFi.com or call 206-339-TREK. That's 206 339 8735. Mike knows. Because if you do, you send in stuff just like this. Hey, Slicer, Shane, New Jersey. Six days, seven hours, 56 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> I already have anxiety. I've watched every trailer, every TV commercial, every making of little snippet on YouTube, uh, and I haven't found a single thing to complain about. So I'm. Oh wait! Uh, my hopes are high. <laughs> I expect them to be made. My expectations are high. I expect them to be be uh, be made, and I'm very very excited. Uh, but I already have anxiety mm. because after it's over, good or bad, I don't know what to start my countdown timer to. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
there you go. So it is mixed. There's a lot of mixed yeah. out yeah. there. There's Our, a lot of discussion. And and that's been the case with all these genres movies that have been coming out lately. I mean, there's good and bad. Even Avengers had people that hated it. And no, loved those it. are crazy no. people. I yeah. know they are crazy people, <laughs> okay. but they are okay. out there. No, well, that didn't happen. You're wrong. Well, I mean, you know, statistically speaking, there's crazy people in the world. Some of them were bound to see that movie. However, <laughs> um, just to let our, our, our fans know, our very own Summer Brooks saw a sneak of um, Man of Steel, and she enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. So if yes. your taste lies in the summer vein, if you enjoy what she enjoys, then you will probably also enjoy it. So there you go. So uh, we'll, we'll have more on this as the film releases and more people see it. <laughs> well, the Man of Steel wasn't the only franchise that returned this weekend. With Game of Thrones and Westeros done for this year. <laughs> I know, I'm so, I'm sad. so sad. But HBO is taking us back to Bon Ton for the new season of True Blood. Mm-hmm. <laughs> blah, blah. Yes, the sixth season debuted Sunday night at nine. This means lots of blood, vampires, and lots of naked people. More yes. importantly, naked Alexander Skarsgård. And yes. lots of naked people, yes. Lots of naked lots Alexander of, Skarsgård. Lots of Skarsgård. Lots, lots of, him. of naked Skarsgård. And, this year. You know, and Alexander, he said the audiences can thank his father. <laughs> all those nude scenes that he, that he's willing to do on the show. Uh, Skarsgård said that growing up in Sweden made him more more comfortable with his... I'm not even going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Go ahead and do yeah, it. No, yeah, I go know. for it. It's no. fine. Made him more com- no, I can't do that. <laughs> no, do it. Come yeah. on. Camera's on you now. Do it. No. No. <laughs> no. Uh, with, it made him more comfortable with his body and being nude. He added that uh, his father's side of the family, they're all hippies and bohemians. Awesome. And that he didn't see his dad wearing pants outside of their home <laughs> until he was 14. Nice. Wow, that's like the wow. opposite of my family. Yeah. <laughs> that's Stellan Skarsgård, right? Isn't Stellan yes, his dad? Yes, I believe like, so. Yeah, suddenly exactly. I'm picturing him pantsless, and that's weird. Yeah. <laughs> just so you know. And this show, th- this this just derailed. Uh, that's this season nothing le- new. Yeah, that's, what, that's what True Blood does, I'm pretty sure. Derails? Derails? Yes. yes. Derails. Like this story did? Yes. <laughs> The fifth season left Suki romant- Suki. Suki. romantically Suka. unentangled, and audiences are curious about the fates of Bill and Eric. Ho Bring hum. on the ho yay! Mm. I don't care. I'm tired of Suki. Eric. The other, there are other characters in that show that I do care about, but yeah, Suki, I don't care. I have I really, care. really deeply disliked Bill from early on. So. Uh, yeah, me too. Mm. I'm tired of that too. Well, we don't know yet what season six holds in store, but... Could there be a new love interest on the horizon for Suki? Of course there I is. I hope not, because I don't care. Is this a picture of her and her brother? That. Yes. Yes, it so is. Maybe, maybe it's him. Oh, God, no. Oh, you know, they've broken That's, many other social taboos. Why not? You know, HBO isn't going to do that with two series, and they already got it running on Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, who's cast this this uh, season is actually oh, interesting. Oh, somebody good. Yes, Oh, yeah, let's the, the, the yeah in addition, the story, in addition, <laughs> yes, Rutger Hauer yes. has been added to the cast of this season. We don't so, know exactly what he is, but no. we know he's on there. Yeah, so, I'm good with that because I love Rutger Hauer. Like, I, I'm a big Hauer is. fan. I like that. Yeah, oh, I, I, oh, he's really intense. But the question, the big question is, will you be tuning in to watch it? <laughs> Let us know. And uh, if you decide to put a stake through True Blood after the last season, couple of episodes, let us know there too. Yeah. Right, are we going to preview it? Yeah, take a run. Yeah. Well, show the trailer. It is the beginning of the end. It's time for humans to bite back. It's go time. I'm going to put a wooden bullet through his cold dead heart. Blood is everything to us. I am sure there's a way we can work this out. About damn town. Somebody did something about y'all. Shut up, Jason. SliceofSciFi.com Hi, Slicer. Super Scotty from Candy here with a bit of a late review on G.I. Joe Retaliation. I had the opportunity tonight to see it in my second-run movie theater. Kind of missed it the first time around, so I uh, went in. And, um, so my recommendation for the movie is don't. Just... Just, just don't. Um, I'm glad I only spent seven dollars on it, but that's seven dollars I'll never get back. Uh, I'll probably waste it anyways. So now you know, and knowing is half the battle. G I uh I uh. <laughs> yeah, he's not wrong. I had to see that for the sake of the kids, and oi. 
Wow. Oh, I yeah. love me a good knowing is half the battle reference. Though. I know. So thank you <laughs> that for that. That was great. So did you see the first one? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and, and how did it compare? So to be to, to be fair, I found the second one more entertaining than the first one, but um, probably equally as bad. But I really <laughs> like The Rock and Bruce yeah. Willis. And mm. so that amped up the entertainment factor, but not necessarily the quality factor. Okay. Well, speaking of bad, the first season was horrible. They heard the second season was better, but... I guess Are we, we're going to do Falling Skies again? Yes. So, producer Remy Arbuchon put the word out that this season will not disappoint, allegedly. I think anybody who works on the show would say that, though, so take his word. Yeah, for I was going to say, that's what um, they said about the first season. My show really sucks, God. <laughs> right? It's a hit, and it Nothing picks like up honesty. after last yeah. season's series cliffhanger, and we'll look through the character of Tom Mason, who is uh, Noah Wiley of ER fame. Mm-hmm. He made an alliance with one set of aliens who seem to have the technology to beat the ones who have been conquering earth um the story it's a better storyline it's a better storyline i've seen the first episode so i can talk about it a little bit i'm gonna try not to spoil for people who haven't though but the story arc examines the price of victory and how much the characters are willing to sacrifice for it it sees um our heroes in a much different place than they were in the first couple of seasons sort of ragtagging on the run um uh, tom mason's family is having a number of crises um but he has his own kind of set of circumstances so he's not necessarily paying attention and his moral compass um, gets tested as he tries to figure out how much he's willing to do in order to beat the aliens. Mm-hmm. Um, Abushan did leak that while some time has passed between seasons two and three, we will not see any flashbacks. I love this. That's one of producer Steven Spielberg's rules for the show, no flashbacks. Really? What? Yeah. Because it's sort of like, you know, exposition well, lazy sometimes. It can be used that way. Some shows do it well. It can become so. a crutch. Um, so oh, we find out what happened during the missing time through the characters and the impacts the event had on them. Having seen That's the first episode i will say they do a decent job of not just doing an exposition dump in order to tell you about it mm-hmm. you learn throughout the episode why things are occurring like something happened to one of um tom mason's sons in the in the gap and they just sh- it, it's just that way nobody you know as you'll you learn later as you move through the episode you sort of learn why and what's going on but that just starts that way and they don't you know what stop i like to tell that you. i like that a lot yeah like it's mm-hmm. something i think they should do with a justice league movie i like that a lot yeah yeah, it's um. I will say I I kind of liked it. I think season two was better than one, and um, season three so far with just the one episode, I'm I'm still watching. Okay, very very cool. Do we want to preview that one too? Let's do. Yeah. Our enemy is hell bent on our destruction. They will accept nothing less than our complete and utter annihilation. We're gonna die out here. No. Let's go now. What is this? Let's do it. Action! Ambitious would be the first word that comes to mind. Let's keep pushing it. Let's keep taking chances. Right now, everything's being redefined. You think you know who your allies are? Should we trust them? Should we not trust them? No! Just when you think they've got it all figured out. You never know what's going to happen. It's over. What the hell is that? There's a tremendous amount of conflict. What are we fighting for? Who are we actually fighting against? <laughs> well, there's a lot of tension, a lot of unknowns, and a lot of question marks. So we don't give up hope ever. Come on! You have no idea what's coming. Hey, Slice of Sci-Fi crew, Moldy Squid here. I recently saw Star Trek Into Darkness, and I thought I'd call in with my impressions of the film. But since you have a minute and a half time limit, I figured that I would just make a list of all the good things about the movie. Number one, Carl Urban as Dr. McCoy. (laughs) (laughs) Okay then. Nice. That's a little harsh. I mean, he's not wrong. Carl Urban is awesome. No, he's not. No, yeah. but Simon Pegg was amazing. Yeah. That's true. Simon Pegg could have been included on there. Yeah. You know, I, I this this thing debate's been going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And I mean, there there's a lot of people that have seen it now, and some some love it, some hate it, some think that's the that's the worst thing ever. But I mean, we should have a feedback palooza. Uh, well, I actually have a comment on it that. I really want to talk about. Hey guys, it's Matt in Washington, D.C. I think that the uh, traditional Star Trek universe and the proverbial J.J. verse 
are going to coexist together just fine. Absolutely. And, uh, for evidence to prove that, I would direct you to uh, a scene pretty early on in uh, Star Trek Into Darkness, which, without spoiling anything, um, I can say involves uh, the main characters in a room with an admiral, and there's a pan shot that shows the progressive enterprises yeah. within yeah. their universe mm -hmm. um, that go all the way up to uh, that particular point uh, in the show. And it shows not only Zephram Cochran's Phoenix yeah. uh, as depicted mm -hmm. in First Contact and uh, in Star Trek Enterprise, but uh, Jonathan Archer's boat, uh, the NX-01 Enterprise mm -hmm. as well. Right. So... I think it's pretty obvious that they're trying to stay consistent with the timeline prior to when the uh, um, Eric Bana um, <laughs> bad news boat. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, red and I think that with that sort of very subtle visual hat tip, it indicates that, yeah, they can coexist. Yeah. And so if they really find a way to bring it back to TV, regardless of which universe it's in, I... I hope they do, and I'd love to watch it. Mm. Megan's shaking her head over there. Oh, what you... well, because he says, okay, hold on, I'm going to do my thing because <laughs> I got these things up. Okay. <laughs> well, it's just, I figure if they do bring it back to TV, and you said regardless of which universe is what he said, I don't want it to be the movie universe. I want it to be the the universe that's been on TV already. And I feel like it's going to be the movie universe, and I don't see us having the original universe again. I think they'll coexist, like he says, but I don't see a lot of new you stuff coming out for that. it. You think we're done with that, right? Because what's mm -hmm. making money now is until, what J.J.'s doing. Until people get sick of the new J.J. universe, which, if it lasts 40 years the way the other one did, I don't know. Well, yeah, but there, yeah. Remember, there's... there's oh, oh, go ahead. Well, I, as I say, but it does seem worth pointing out that the original universe is being continued in, uh, you know, fan series, right? Um, right. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's in That's fan true. series. It's online. It's actually there. There's there's talk of bringing back some of those elements. So it's not completely dead. But this one is the one that's making all yeah, the. Yeah, and I don't see them making TV. But the thing that we yeah. got to remember is that JJ is about to go head first into Star Wars oh, he and is, even yeah. he has said that he may not have the time to do Star Trek exactly. anymore so yeah, that's true. who knows what's going to happen vision. to the movie franchise may have a different vision well, or, oh my gosh, or, or, we might get a third universe? No, no, I don't think I don't, it'll do that. But I do think that I, I do think that the 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 move from movies to television and take that universe to TV allows Abrams to step aside, keep the mm -hmm. universe going, and we at least get something because we may not see another movie for a long time. And that's yeah. smart because he appears to just be able to create um, TV shows like Tribbles Multiply. I mean, <laughs> so that's probably far more likely. I yeah. think so. Well, Sony had gamers on Twitter standing up and cheering with news yeah. that the new PlayStation 4, which will hit stores in time for the holiday season, uh, it's first up with the price point of the new console, which will be $399. Shocking. Oh, my God. Oh, I remember the first Nintendo about. was 99 Exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> also garnering cheers was news that the PS4 will not restrict used game use. Mm -hmm. Good. Uh -huh. That's big. During it the is. Electronic Entertainment Expo press event... Sony Computer Entertainment of America president and CEO Jack Trenton said its PS4 will not restrict used games, nor will it require an online connection, and specify noted that the PS4 won't stop working if you haven't authenticated <laughs> within 24 hours. Wow. Bam! Obviously yeah, taking really. a jab at Xbox. Yeah. Uh, one's requirement is to perform online checks of consoles. Uh, early reports from Microsoft indicate that there could be limitations on lending games to friends mm -hmm. and restrictions on renting titles for the few weeks or months of their release. Yeah. And that's 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 smart. That That's the way to do it. So you keep a handle on it without getting carried away. Because that's the whole problem with DRM is it just it gets it becomes a monster really quick where it's locking you down from locking honest people down from doing the things that they do on a normal yeah. basis. Mm -hmm. Well, the console will require an online check every 24 hours. If not, players cannot use the device yeah, And we're talking about Xbox still. Right. Yep. Yes. But wait, there's more. This is the good part. The price point. The Xbox, Xbox is a full 100 bucks higher than the new mm -hmm. PS4. Yeah. 
and suddenly everybody was like, yay, PS4. Yeah. I mean, didn't, what, am I remembering correctly that um, Microsoft had some press conferences and some announcements and they canceled scheduled and all. they canceled, canceled them canceled all every once one the of Sony them. news came out because yeah, exactly. they realized that suddenly they are way second tier. No yes. kidding. Yeah, right? Just in those few differences. Mm-hmm. Sort of out of the game for a lot of folks. Yeah, it sounds mm-hmm. like the console wars are about to get even mm-hmm. more heated and mm-hmm. more intense. Yeah. We want to know what excites you about the new consoles. Will you be an early adopter or will you wait and see what happens when the consoles hit the stores later this year? Mm. <laughs> Something to ponder. I think it's a good time to ponder while we're watching our, our, yeah. our, our no. Skywatch. Yeah? Oh, okay. Good morning, folks. The storm was loud and is still lingering a bit, but the worst missed me last night. Can't say the same along a line from Chicago to Pittsburgh, where early risers are getting a flashing sky this morning. Major wind, flooding, hail, and a few tornadoes dropped as the storm began last night. Sunrise will reveal the damage totals while the same threat moves to the coastal areas tonight, with a similar threat out west due to a lot of heat. If the phrase black hole makes you cringe, you're likely an Electric Universe proponent, like me. But the investigation of powerful X-ray sources in our galaxy and beyond is unquestionably an important pursuit. Turns out Andromeda has more such objects than our imagination or computer models could have predicted. Nuclear Day on RSOE Alert Map. Hope Creek and shut down due to water circulation issues within the system. At Joseph M. Farley, the electric generator malfunctions forced to shut down. In Sweden, Come on now, I'm tired of calling out ring halls. It is constantly trouble, never working properly. They just turned it on and within two hours there was a fire, apparently built on an ancient Swedish Indian burial ground. Folks were coming back to quakes at the end, but here the last 24 hours was as sad as the last few days. No major quaking with just minor upticks in the Caribbean. Soho solar wind plot shows three days. And this clarifies that the density spike days ago was created by speedier particles bunching up the slower ones out in front of it. ACE 24-hour data shows maintained speed with density peaks at the end. Those denser waves broke through our shield to be absorbed in the ionosphere. Flaring is still very weak, but at least we're off the baseline now. This growing region of focus for two days is no longer growing. It peaked and has begun to fade with new spots on the southeastern limb ready to take their place. Magnetics can't be well judged until these turn in further, but I'd like to draw attention to the leading group really flashing at the southern edge as she guides the way. This potentially means that this group could grow into a more dangerous spot. Umbral field has quieted considerably, but is blocking the solar surface in a big way. No matter as our next coronal holes will not be hidden, Pulling up the Stonyhurst heliographic, we see this southern dark area turning in just ahead of a big boy up north. You can see the dark edge of his cresting even now. Folks, this is June, 13 days so far. Clearly, coronal holes were more prevalent at the start. Now let's check the largest quakes in these last 13 days. The six pointers were early with the coronal holes, and since then we've quieted significantly. The coming days will likely provide an end to this seismic drought. Skywatchers know it's a big two weeks upcoming. Too bad you can't really see most of it. Jupiter is in the glare of the sun, visible only with the Lasco C3, but set to conjoin in just one week. Using NASA's JPL orbital diagram for Ceres 1, we reveal Mercury conjoining Venus around the same time. You might catch this one at sunset. We got filaments popping in a bunch of different wavelengths. Top concern is the US weather tonight. Top watches are for the incoming sunspots and coronal holes. Eyes open. No fear, it's 6.35 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone. This week's Con Report is brought to you by Geek Nation Tours. Find out more at geeknationtours.com. Hello, fellow Slicers. This is Kevin Batchelder, and I want to give you a Con Report for Dragon Con, which takes place in Atlanta, Georgia, over Labor Day weekend in early September each year. Now, this is one of the largest fan-run conventions in the world. And while I'm not officially involved with the con myself, I do take part in many panels and events each year. I've been going since 2005 and wouldn't miss it for the world. It's that much fun. It's held at five official hotels, which are all within a block or two of each other in the downtown area. Now, that makes for a very comfortable and casual setting. And it's almost like having 40 different conventions all going on at the same time because of the different programming tracks. 
you've got topics covered here such as Star Trek, urban fantasy, American sci-fi and fantasy media, Star Wars, Whedonverse, podcasting, gaming, not to mention multiple literature tracks, as well as a track covering hard science and space and even robotics, including the robot wars every year. Now you can visit the official website at dragoncon.org for much more details on things. And events are held from 10 a.m. in the morning till well past midnight every day. And if you take into account the film festivals and parties and other get-togethers, there are events going on around the clock. Yes, this is a very large convention at probably 55,000 plus attendees, but because of the individual track nature, you can create your own con. Go to just what you'd like to do. You can sample a lot of tracks or just go to one or two. There's also usually over 400 celebrity guests in attendance, authors, TV and movie stars doing panels and signings. And the cosplay is out of this world. This is some of the best you're going to see at a con anywhere in the world. The Saturday Morning Parade is another can't-miss event with all the cosplayers in downtown Atlanta. This thing is so big, it's covered every year by CNN and other major media outlets. Now, if you're not sure if this type of convention might be for you, I suggest you fire up your favorite search engine and search for Four Days at Dragon Con. It should link you to an award-winning PBS documentary about an hour long that does a great job of giving you the flavor of this convention. And a little plug on a personal side, every year now for the last several, I've hosted the Sci-Fi Drive-In Theater event as part of the American Sci-Fi and Fantasy Media. Myself and Joe Crow act as hosts and do an MST3K, excuse me, MST3K style uh, riffing of a B-movie. Get a couple hundred folks who come in, all ages, kids to adults, and we have fun, you know, rooting for the hero, rooting for the monsters, titles such as Sharktopus and Megapython versus Gatoroid, trying to come up with our title for this year, but I'm sure it'll be a fun one. Now, looking forward to seeing many of you there, hopefully. And if you're new to the con, maybe going for the first time, feel free to search me out on social media. I run a Dragon Con Newbies Facebook group where we really help out the newbies get used to the convention and what to do. So, hope you all take care. Absolutely. And yeah. it is, uh, thank you for that, Kevin. That was a great little report. And uh, it, it's, it's again, another year, Dragon Con coming up, so... Awesome. So we have a visit from somebody we haven't seen in a while. That's right. You That's asked right. for it and we got it for you. Zoe Hewitt is Woo. back on the red carpet for Slice of Sci-Fi interviewing cool people. <laughs> this time it is for the premiere of Hatchet 3, mm-hmm. the next installment of the Victor Crowley slasher films. Now, because this is a horror film, Zoe's report can be found at zombiechannel.com. But we did manage to grab a little excerpt for you to show you the goodness. Hey, Slice of Sci-Fi fans, I'm Zoe Hewitt, and I have missed you guys a lot. I know it's been a while, but we are back on the red carpet. We're at the Hatchet 3 premiere Let's now. Let's just say uh, I, my character definitely gets in the thick of things, for sure. Okay. So, Slice of Sci-Fi fans, there's a little teaser right there. Fine with me. Now, now we're Slice of Sci-Fi. Are you a big fan of the um, sci-fi genre, which, of I'm course, includes horror? I'm sci-fi. Sci-fi is actually my favorite genre. Okay. So These. And come right. I, I know this is, might be a pain with you, but come this okay. way. But everyone thinks you're joking around, like, oh, they're doing a bit. Then when you pass out and I drag you off that way. Yeah. So you've got a lot going on. Well, you know, we are Slice of Sci-Fi. So tell us a little more about this sci-fi project that's in the works. Sci-fi project I can't, I can't talk too much about, although it's... So it, did you need stitches or anything? I did not. Uh, and thank God I didn't have to look pretty in the movie, so it worked. <laughs> well, you can't... Uh, we were at Craft Service, just because that's what you do. Once you're a producer not the director, you get to hang up by Craft Service a lot more. Uh-huh. And all of a sudden, this... Big alligator just walked right up, took the skittles, and left. No, and I was that he cries himself to sleep every night. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Just uh, scoop, slice of sci-fi fans. You heard it here first. <laughs> and if you want, if you really want to entice him, put purple skittles in your cleavage. <laughs> I lost it. I'm a cumber bunny. <laughs> Actually, we're cumber bitches, but he he's he's a prissy little guy and doesn't want us to call ourselves cumber bitches but that's who and what we are so, maybe people are too scared of you i don't know why <laughs> ah, this is I'm the scared. second time tonight you guys second time who did that slice of sci-fi fans i hope you appreciate what i do for you i have been strangled not once tonight but twice by two pretty big horror movie villains so i suppose it was worth it let's see <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> good. Wow, that's an intrepid reporter getting strangled twice. Yeah. Thank you, Zoe. There is a re- that, that is a red carpet event that you must, must watch. And yes, we miss you, Zoe. It's uh-huh. so good to see you that back. That was fun. That was a lot of fun. And uh, yes, you can go find that at zombiechannel.com. Yeah. Of course, that is going to do it for this show, though, because we have just had too much stuff in the show to... I don't know what I know. else to do. I, we tried not to have opinions so we could get through it. But I know. It's just, it's just no didn't helping work. us. Just yeah. really jam-packed. And guess what? It's not over because there's a lot more later this week. Um, definitely keep tuning in. We always have content going out. And you can find that, of course, by uh, following us on the uh, Facebook. Follow us on Twitter and uh, you'll find out all the fun stuff that we do around here. That'll do it. We'll see you very soon, folks. Bye.